Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepak Shikurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. India and France hold defence dialogue in New Delhi to boost cooperation. Pakistani minister says elections not possible before August 2023. And Prime Minister Diabas Nepali Congress emerges as largest single party in the polls. Now for all the details, the defence ministers of India and France on Monday co-chaired their annual defence dialogue in New Delhi. The talks included discussions on a wide range of bilateral, regional and defence industrial cooperation issues. French defence minister Sebastien Licorneau was received by his Indian counterpart Rajnath Singh and accorded a ceremonial tri-services guard of honour as he arrived in New Delhi for the 4th India-France Annual Defence Dialogue. This was Likornu's first official visit to the South Asian country after emerging as the youngest person to take up the Defence Minister's role in May this year. During their meeting, the two leaders discussed a wide range of bilateral, regional and defence industrial cooperation issues, Rajnath Singh later informed on Twitter. The meeting comes in a year that has seen an acceleration of the French and Indian armed forces endeavours towards greater interoperability through multiple joint air, navy and army exercises. Earlier in the day, Likorno visited the National War Memorial in New Delhi and laid a wreath in honour of the slain soldiers. On Sunday, he also visited India's indigenous aircraft carrier INS Vikrant in port city of Kochi and acknowledged India's indigenous potential and self-reliance capability. The visit reaffirms France's engagement in the Indo-Pacific and India's centrality in the French strategy for the region. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's planning and development minister Ehsan Iqbal has ruled out the possibility of snap elections, saying that until the rehabilitation work in flood-hit provinces are completed, the country won't go to polls. This comes after former Prime Minister and Opposition PTI Chief Imran Khan on Saturday called off his long march rally to demand elections and announced resignations of his party members from provincial assemblies. Pakistan's Planning and Development Minister Asan Iqbal on Sunday in a talk with local news agency ruled out the possibility of early elections in the country, a demand made by former Prime Minister Imran Khan's opposition PDI party. Pointing out the rehabilitation work after the September floods, Iqbal said it will take around six to eight months for rehabilitation works to complete in Sindh and Balochistan provinces, which were hit drastically. He further added publishing of census before polls will also delay the elections. This comes amid announcement by Imran Khan of calling off his anti-government march towards Islamabad to demand elections. Khan, in his address to supporters in Rawalpindi, said he won't continue this march as there will be havoc and loss to the country. He, however, said PTI will resign from assemblies across Pakistan, which includes Punjab and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, where PTI is in power. Before this, PTI members had resigned from National Assembly after Imran Khan's government was toppled in April. The ruling coalition in response is looking for constitutional and legal options against the possible move of chief ministers to dissolve the assemblies in these two provinces. The meeting of heads of the coalition parties would be held next week to devise an action plan, local media reports suggest. If assemblies are dissolved in these provinces, Pakistan law mandate fresh election in 90 days. Amid the ongoing economic turmoil, conducting polls can cost dearly for the South Asian nation. 
More news from Pakistan. Opposition PTI party leader Azam Khan Swati was arrested on Sunday by Federal Investigative Agency for allegedly tweeting obnoxious remarks against outgoing Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa. Arrested for the second time within two months, Swati has been a vocal critic of Bajwa and the Pakistani Army. For the second time within two months, Pakistan's opposition PTI Senator Azam Khan Swati was arrested by FIA, the Federal Investigative Agency, over what it termed as obnoxious tweet against the outgoing Army Chief General Kamar Javed Vajba. The FIA registered by FIA has made Swati accused under charges of abetting mutiny and defamations. Swati, who was out on bail in a similar case, has been vocal against the Army establishment. He has accused army officials of custodial torture and abuse, alleging that he was stripped during detention. Reiterating his accusation against army and General Bajwa at PTI's rally in Rawalpindi, Swati went on to praise Indian Army Chief General Manoj Pandey, asking Bajwa to disclose his assets and how he acquired them. जनरल पांडे वो आर्मी चीफ बनता है उसके टोटल एहसास से 26 29 लाख रुपए है इस कौम को बता के जाओ कि तुम्हारे हिसाब से कितने हैं कहां से लाए हैं मैं पाकिस्तान का शेरी हूं तुमसे पूछ रहा हूं और पूछता रहूंगा Meanwhile, as per local media, Pakistan Army's media wing ISPR has termed a recent report by digital media portal Fact Focus on Assets of General Bajwa and his family members as misleading. The data was being exaggerated on the basis of assumptions, it said. Finance Minister Ishakdar last week said the leak was clearly violative of the complete confidentiality of tax information and said the identities of people who had leaked the records had been traced. Moving on, on the 14th anniversary of 2611 Mumbai terror attacks, a counter-terrorism think tank held a seminar in Geneva and raised the issue of China impeding the UN attempts to designate global terrorists based in Pakistan. The panelists emphasized the need of international criminal justice and pointed out lack of collaboration. The Geneva chapter of think tank International Center Against Terrorism raised the issue of China blocking the United Nations move to designate global terrorists as it paid tributes to the victims of 2611 Mumbai attacks on its 14th anniversary this past weekend. A panel of specialists from different countries emphasized the need of international criminal justice and pointed out lack of collaboration as in the case of Sajid Mir, a Pakistani terrorist of lashkar e taiba whose designation China opposed in the UN Security Council in September. Mir is also a co-accused in 2008 Mumbai attacks. The entire panel discussed the tragedies of terrorism and unanimously condemned the act. Discriminately, all the way from five-star hotels to a general hospital and a cafe as well. The Times of India building, St. Xavier's College. So even educational institutions were not spared. So we can very well imagine the level of hate and the radicalization these terrorists had gone through that they was. India and the United States accuse Hafiz Saeed, the founder of Pakistan-based lashkar e taiba terror group, of being the mastermind of the attacks in which 166 people, including six Americans, were killed. The lone survivor of the militant squad, Pakistani national Ajmal Kassab, was hanged in 2012. Well, a group of UN experts has said that the Taliban's treatment of Afghan women and girls, including their exclusion from parks and gyms as well as schools and universities, may amount to a crime against humanity. The experts in a statement said that women's confinement to their homes was tantamount to imprisonment. A group of UN experts said recently in a statement that Taliban's treatment of Afghan women and girls, including the exclusion from parks and gyms, 
as well as schools and universities may amount to a crime against humanity. The assessment by the UN Special Rapporteur on Afghanistan, Richard Just Bennett, and nine other UN experts said the treatment of women and girls may amount to gender persecution under the Rome Statute to which Afghanistan is a party. They said that women's confinement to their homes was tantamount to imprisonment, adding that it was likely to lead to increased levels of domestic violence and mental health problems. Taliban Foreign Ministry spokesperson Abdul Kahar Balki in response said the current collective punishment of innocent Afghans by the UN sanctions regime, all in the name of women's rights and equality, amount to war crimes and crimes against humanity. Despite initial public commitments to uphold the rights of women and girls, the Taliban, which seized power last August, has introduced policies of systematic discrimination that violate their rights. Western governments have said the Taliban needs to reverse its course on women's rights, including their U-turn on signals that would open girls' high schools for any part towards formal recognition of the Taliban government. In news from Nepal, the ruling Nepali Congress, led by Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Dioba, has maintained its lead as the single largest party, winning 53 seats in the parliamentary elections, according to results so far. Elections to the House of Representatives in seven provincial assemblies were held on November 20th, and the counting of votes started on Monday last week. The opposition, CPN-UML, has grabbed 42 seats, while coalition ally, CPN Mao Center, has secured 17 seats. The final results are expected to be declared by end of this week. The next government will face challenges such as maintaining a stable political administration, revitalizing the tourism industry and balancing relations with neighbors China and India. Foreign reserves are shrinking and the retail inflation rate has been hovering at six-year highs of about 8% in the Himalayan nation, where one in five people live on less than $2 a day. Moving on, the first underwater traffic tunnel in Bangladesh is set to open in January 2023 after key civil infrastructure works were completed and a ceremony was held this past weekend to commemorate the milestone. The Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman Tunnel, which runs under the Karnafuli River in the port city of Chittagong, cost 1.1 billion US dollars to build and has been partially funded by the Exim Bank of China. China Communications Construction Company was the builder for the tunnel. Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, who joined the ceremony virtually, said their tunnel is expected to improve connectivity and help businesses. When opened, the underwater portion of the tunnel will run for around two miles and help cut travel time between the towns of Anvara and Patenga. Well, in keeping with the tradition, a four-and-a-half-year-old boy considered to be the reincarnation of the revered supreme head of the Nyagma School of Tibetan Buddhism was brought to India's hill town of Shimla on Sunday. The young boy will now be formally inducted into religious life and will start his religious education. Take a look. A four-and-a-half-year-old boy considered the reincarnation of Taklung Stul Rinpoche the supreme head of Nyangma School of Tibetan Buddhism, on Sunday, arrived in India's northern Shimla hill town. Navang Tashi Rapte reached the city from the Lahal Spiti district along with his family, where he was welcomed by the monks who also took blessings from him. The boy would be formally inducted into religious life this week and will start his religious education in Dorji Dak Monastery in Pantakati in Shimla. पहले तो जब ऐसा सुना तो खुशी भी हो रही थी ना तो थोड़ा बहुत फिर माँ से भी अलग हो रही हो थोड़ा बहुत दुख भी तो फीलिंग हो रहा था मुझे तो बेसिकली फिर तो खुशी की तो बात है सारी मतलब एक अवतारी लामा पैदा हुए हैं तो सारी हम जितने भी इंसान तो है ही है सारे जितने भी हमारी जो सब के लिए बहुत अच्छा है ये लामा बहुत अवतारी बहुत बड़े लामा जी है तो मुझे बहुत खुशी है तो ये चीज़ें तीन या चार साल में जब बच्चा खेल रहा होता है तो हमें पता लग जाता है कि भाई कि उसके हॉबीज क्या हैं वो क्या बोलता है अगर ध्यान से हम लोग अगर देखेंगे तो ये चीज़ें दिखता है कि भाई कौन क्या बोलता है तो वो चीज़ें सारा सिम्बोल्स होते हैं जी ताकलुंग स्तुल रिन पोछे डाइट ऑन दिसंबर ट्वेंटी फोर ट्वेंटी फिफ्टीन सिंस दिन दिबिंस एंड अदर बुद्धिस्ट इन द हिमालयन रीजन वो वेटिंग फॉर द री इनकानेशन ऑफ द हाई लामा 
Nyang Ma School is one of the most important sects out of the main four schools of the Tibetan Buddhism. The Rinpoche was recognized as the head of the Nyang Ma School by the Dalai Lama in 2013, two years before his death. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.